Hey, what's up? It's Tackless, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on point of interest and objectives. Um, and I'm going to be going into a little bit more depth on how to trigger an objective after you, like, say, kill a group of enemies. I know a lot of people have been asking that. So first off, we've got our interact point of interest here. Interact with this, and we'll spawn in some demons, and we'll have a little... Some demons, and if you see on the left there, we've got the slay demons objective with a timer. We'll kill the demons, that'll end, and we get a prize. Neat stuff, huh? Um, so yeah, I'll be looking into, we'll be looking into how to set the point of interest uh, settings and stuff like that. All right. Okay, so step one, let's go ahead and delete all this fun stuff. There we go. So we've got our player, and let's have something for our player to interact with. So we'll grab panel, put it there, and on used, we're gonna have it spawn in like some demons. So show, and then we'll need to set these guys to uh, hidden at first, and we'll make like three of them. Not gonna go as crazy as I did in the uh, demonstration. So we'll just have all three of these guys show. There. So we'll spawn all three of these guys at once. Now we need to probably set a point of interest on this panel. So our player has something to go to. So we'll go over here to player and team. And on spawn, we'll go to this panel and we will set point of interest. Then we'll go into the settings on this, or no, then we'll select the panel, have it select itself, and clear points of interest. So when it's interacted with, it'll clear its point of interest. And since it can only be interacted with once, um, then after that, you, it, the point of interest won't show and you can't interact with it again. So when it's interacted, it'll spawn in these three guys. Now it's time to put in the settings for our point of interest. So let's go ahead and go over to communication, select point of interest settings, set active. So point of interest one, we'll set this to, um, we'll put it the question mark, that's a good one. And then the point of interest text, we'll put interact. There we go. And if we wanna have another point of interest, we'll have set active, Second point of interest settings, we'll set this point of interest to two. Let's set this icon, we'll leave it on the skull, and then put this to enemy. And let's make it red for good measure. All right. So we've got the basics here. By default, all of these set point of interests will be set to point of interest one. If you wanted to set this to what we had set up for the enemy, we'd need to switch it to point of interest two. But we're not going to do that. Let's have this spawn in one more guy. Um, let's see, show, demon, we'll have it a possessed engineer. We'll have him initially hidden. We'll also do on spawn, set point of interest, and we'll put this point of interest to point of interest too. So when he spawns in, he'll be highlighted separately from these guys. Okay, so this is how we can just get him, everyone to spawn in. Now let's look at those uh, the objectives. Let's go ahead and preview this just so you can see what it looks like at the moment. Now you can have multiple point of interest showing at once, including multiple of the same point of interest, I'm pretty sure. But you can only have five different point of interest settings set up at a time. So we'll go over here and we'll interact with this. And our guys will spawn in. And our one target here, we'll say enemy. Kill that guy, kill these guys. No problem. Head back to the editor. Alrighty, let's go ahead and look at that objective. So let's go to this panel and then unused Go to communication and we'll put an objective. Let's put this objective to timer because timer is a good one. So here uh, we'll have this show timer, put the duration to 15 seconds. 
And then for the objective, for the icon, we'll choose... Let's choose the quake icon. And for the text, we'll do slay demons, if I can type. There we go. There's also the secondary objective text, uh, but that doesn't show up on the timer. Okay. Then what we're going to do so that it knows when these demons have been killed is we'll go to this guy and we'll do on killed. We'll set a variable. I'm sure there's other ways to do this. This is just the way that I'm most comfortable with and is the most flexible for me. Um, and we're going to add a new integer and add. So this integer variable, we're going to call um, demons slain. Icon, good old skull. Initial value zero, and then we're just going to have each one of these guys on killed add, on killed add, on killed add. Then you'll need to count up how many demons you have, and we've got four, so we'll keep that in mind. Next, we need to set a timer because this objective is pretty much only for show. You can't do anything once it finishes. So on used, we're going to put, go over here to flow. And we're going to grab a timer. Start timer. First, we're not going to have it show in HUD because we already have our objective showing in HUD. Set our duration to 15 seconds. Okay. And then on timer finished, we're going to have it test the, we're going to have it test an integer compare. Mm -hmm. On the left hand side, we're going to set our demon slain. On the right hand side, we're going to set it to four because we have four demons. If this succeeds or is equal to, let's have it spawn in a reward. Or you could have it open a door, or you could have it do pretty much anything you want at this point. But I'm just going to have it spawn in a reward because it looks nice and pretty. So we'll spawn this in. Um, spawn object. It's going to be a pyramid. And we're going to have all kinds of fun stuff in it. Okay. There we go. So that's what happens if it succeeds. If it fails, let's have it play a sound effect. Okay, there we go. So it's going to play a sound effect on when it fails. Now, we don't want to have to wait for the 15 seconds to finish before we get our result. We want to be able to get a result as soon as everyone's dead, right? Right. So we're going to go over here where they're all adding to this variable, and we're going to have on changed, and it's going to do another integer compare. So every time this changes when one of them dies, it's going to check to see... If the demon slain is equal to four, if it is equal to four, it is going to finish this timer. Okay. We're also going to put on timer finished. Let's have it get rid of the objective. There we go. This isn't exactly the most organized of code, but it's all spread out and easy looking. All right, let's go ahead and give that a shot. Okay, so we'll go over here and interact. First, we're going to kill them. So kill that one, kill that one, kill that one, kill that one. And we get our prize. Okay, let's go ahead and restart that, and we're going to let it fail this time. Because you have to test it both ways. You have to test failure, and you have to test success. Okay, so we'll interact with it, and then we'll just not kill any of them. Eight, seven, yeah, we'll just wait for the objective to time out. Two, one. Well, you couldn't really hear it, but there was the sound effect over the sound demons. So yeah, that's how you can set up the point of interest. Um, 
You can also look at like the, the different types of objectives. I'd recommend playing around with some of them. Some of the objectives require that you um, attach them to a enemy or a player. So like if we put this guy out on spawned, then we could have this set to um, communication, objective, show health. And this expects a player as an activator. I'm sorry, a, a, something with a health bar as an activator. And then it'll show up uh, their health bar. So we'll just, yeah, pick this, health, yep. If you have multiple objectives going at once, they'll stack on top of each other. I think whichever one is the newest uh, stacks on top of the other ones. But only one should show until we hit the uh, the button. He'll spawn in and see we have the health and I'll try to just... Yep, we'll just damage him a little bit. Bam. So that's how you can set the health bar up for one enemy. I have yet to find a good way to set health bars up for each individual enemy to be above their head. But I'm still looking into it, so I'm sure I'll find a way. So yeah. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful. I know that this is going to cover quite a few things that people have been asking for. Um, this tutorial was brought to you because of a poll I did on Twitter again. So if you want me to make a tutorial, keep an eye on my Twitter page because I do polls every so often. And usually whichever poll gets the highest votes is the one that I will do. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for helping me hit 3,000 subscribers. And I will see you guys later.